a very good afternoon and a warm welcome to everyone present here today we all have gathered here to witness our sec second lecture from the centenary se lecture series which would be delivered by our beloved alumnus professor ochud ghosh now i would like to request our respected hod to take take over and announce the session chair well let me announce the session chair today's session chair is professor subhashish bhoumit who is our dean planning and development so i request professor bhoumit to take over and lead the session respected uh, professor achyut ghosh professor amitabh ghosh professor ek mollik distinguished alumni of the institute faculty members students officers and the staff members of our institute a very good evening to all of you it is indeed a very happy moment for all of us that the department is celebrating the glorious occasions of its centenary year by organizing different events the mechanical engineering department there has a glorious history of the past and the department has developed many talented eminent engineering professionals who have made immense contribution to shape our country our society and the world we have witnessed a lot of changes over this 100 years from new people to new buildings new technology new state of the art laboratory new ideas and the department has shown itself to be an adaptable to the industrial needs particularly during the last 25 years is celebration with the first lecture by professor mitabo ghosh it was held on 28th of <clears throat> december 2021 and the talk was on mechanical engineering its evolutionary characters and the changing phase now today we are going to start our second centenary lecture and this will be delivered by none other than professor achyut ghosh an alumni of this alumnus of this department and he will deliver a talk on how to be an engineer now it is customary to say a few words about the speakers professor achyut ghosh obtained his bachelor of engineering in mechanical engineering 1961 and he obtained first class first positions from this institute at that at that time it was named as bengal engineering college shipur and uh, he has a vast experience working experience in the industry with expertise in the field of design of various engineering equipments he was the director of the medco group engineers from 1962 to 1996 and in additions to his contributions to the industries he is also an active academician since 1996 he has been serving as a professor and a member of the bos board of studies in the department of construction engineering jadavpur university kolkata he has also served as a visiting professor at iit kharagpur iit guwahati iit delhi 
IIT Madras, and several other engineering colleges. Professor Achyut Ghosh is the fellow of Institution of Engineers, India, and the Indian Associations of Structural Engineers. He has been a member of IRS, that is Indian Road Congress. The different committees are there. He's a member of Committee B5 and B6 from 1990, 1967 till that. And he was a member of the Technical Advisory Board, Konkan Railway, for Chinav and Ajikad. He is presently a member of the Technical Advisory Group, National Council Region Transport Corporations, NCRT. And in 2011, he was honored with the contributions of contributions to engineering yeah. award by the West Bengal State Center, Institutions of Engineers. He has already published more than 60 technical papers in various reputed journals. And as a hobby, he nurtures a rooftop garden. So this is a very small introduction about Professor Ghosh, and we are all eagerly uh, listen his talk, and his talk will be on how to be an engineer. Over to Professor Achyut Ghosh. Thank you, Professor Bhoumi, and I must thank the organizers of the centenary celebrations and also i am quite aware there are two great personality uh, who has been kind enough to attend this lecture one is professor amita bagosh and then ashok Mullik. but as it happens by college i am senior to both of them but anyway they are quite eminent personality and so one has to be very guarded while speaking. Of course, I have to be guarded before speaking in front of Shumona. If I say something wrong, then she will catch me by the tail. So I am, whatever I'll be speaking. Now, in this point, shall I switch to my uh, presentation? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please, please, please. Uh, what is that again? Uh, then this and then. So, uh, then share. share option inside your video. Share, share. Then I see screen one. Then what do I do? So you open up your presentation or so, uh, share that screen. Uh, one, share, share. One second. So on the left side. Share. Then, uh, on, yeah, yeah, uh, that's it. No, uh, a screen is there. Screen, yes, yes, sharing something. Yes, yes, now that you can open the presentation. That is okay. Yes, sir. Make it work. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. This yes, is sir. I first want to apologize that I have a bad throat. I got some cold in the last few days. So sometimes my voice may be choked. So I first apologize for that. Second, my statement is whatever I'll be staying here. Whatever I have shown in my slides and whatever I'll be talking, all are from my personal experience. So when I'm talking, I am talking from my faith, from my confirmed belief. I'll be speaking certain practices. I'll be talking about certain practices. May I request my friends who are listeners 
to try them, to follow them. And those practices has come up out of my more than 60 years of practicing engineering in my field. One thing I like to tell you, when I graduated in 1961, Professor Amitabha Bhattacharji was our teacher. He used to spend three months in Russia, three months in USA, six months in India. He was then in Bengal Engineering College before moving to IIT Kanpur and then to Jadapur. But then he told us, come, come, come with me. I am, I'll put you to Illinois. But I thought India is a very beautiful country to practice as an engineer. And my belief, I am satisfied with that, my belief. One second, please. Yes. So I'll have a list always. Whatever I'll be discussing will be presented here. So this point I am discuss mental faculties. To all my friends, I suggest please think. These days the habit of thinking sitting peacefully in your table, on the roof, on the road, and thinking has been somehow lost due to the presentation of continuous 24 hour mobile equipment. So, my, my suggestion is kindly keep some time for thinking. On the right hand side, <clears throat> you'll be seeing certain botanical items, vegetable items, which I am deeply interested throughout my career. And I consider that you are either an engineer or a doctor or a lawyer or whatever. Your one of the primary responsibilities is looking into the production of the food. If we do not get enough to eat, we'll die out of hunger. Somebody asked Einstein, what is your factory? Where do you work? He showed his brain. This is my factory. He had a passion. He is both theoretical and applied. Applied here. So that is why Einstein is Einstein as our Robinson. At par, one level of intelligence. Now, if once you think this thing happens in your brain, this these are the brain elements and electrical signal. Very minute electrical signal passes through them. These are the enlarged. This is the basic brain, somewhat enlarged, and this is the enlarged view. This is what happens to your brain. Now, you you all have heard the name of Alzheimer's. You go on exercising your brain, you will defeat Alzheimer's. I am 81 years old. I still work about 10 hours a day. I believe I haven't got Alzheimer's as yet. Please read. Looking at books does not help these days. Uh, due to the advent of this mobile, reading habit has gone. But I am suggesting you, my friends, that I can talk something wrong and forget about it. It is lost. But if I write something wrong in the book, it will be there for hundreds of years. So people are very careful about writing what is right and wrong in a book. So please read. That is the only way of increasing your knowledge base. What do you will read? In engineering, I found strength of materials, volume one and volume two. Irrespective of whatever is the branch 
he or she is following. These are two beautiful books. If a mechanical, structural engineer reads the two books, Strength of Material by Tiboshenko, Volume 1 and Volume 2, I consider him to be a 50% engineer. I have found a lovely book by Professor Walter Levin on the love of physics. Professor Levin used to lecture in room number 800 in MIT, courses 801 and 802. Kindly look up. These are beautiful lectures. In my life, I have, uh, in Presidency College and Shippur Engineering, I have had the privilege of attending various lectures of various brilliant professors. But when I hear some of the lectures of Professor Walter Levy, I feel, I wish I could do some lectures physically under him. Now, as you see these slides, you'll be seeing some of the biological and botanical plants. These are my hobby. I had a garden. So these pictures are all photographs, all burying none are almost our production and taken by me. So are lectures by Professor uh, Walter Levin available online? Yes, please. Yes, please. Any question? Yes, they are available Sorry. online. Yes, courses 801 and 802, they are available online. Yes, please. Yes, please. All are available in um, um, you, you, YouTube. Lovely lectures, beautiful lectures. Now, you have to study national, international standards. So you have to prepare yourself to understand a standard. You, you can read the language in a standard, but to understand it, you must understand the subject to make the meaning of a code. A code is a very precise statement of a, of something to be done. But to understand the meaning behind it, you have to study the background. So there is no way out, sir. You have to study, study, study. These are... I am sorry. These are the snapshots of various libraries in our residence as BC252 Salt Lake. I stay in BC252 Salt Lake and uh, my garden has been taken away. So I have got a rooftop garden which I will show in due course. And these are the various libraries I study. I, I, so it doesn't matter that you have to study 100% of the books you have purchased. But having the book, knowing where to consent the book, when the demand arises, you you know, you have, you have had a rough idea of the book. So at the time of need, you just study the appropriate portion and your knowledge is better. Now, we'll come to the next stage design consideration. This part is what is taught to you in the engineering colleges. It's basically compression, tension, shear, bending and torsion. This part is a little bit difficult. <coughs> we have got a fundamental concept, steel in tension, concrete in compression. Compression, Sorry. <coughs> Tension, bending, these days, when you are putting things in FEMA, finite element method, the plain figures are not necessary. You, con you take an element and you divide it in various modules, smallest, the amount is more. The time is more. So in that concept, when you are doing finite elemental analysis, your element 
in your metal that is being stressed has to be considered like this. Now, we have got one thing which is buckling, which I have not discussed earlier. This does not follow the laws of physics. Our engineering laws, stress and strain within limit and all this is very, very physics following physics. They follow the laws of physics. But this buckling is somewhat, it follows the laws of physics, but somewhat different. So this cycle, the ring, you know, these rings, these are intention. They are never in compression. This element cannot stand the compression. So this is a beautiful design, human engineering, a cycle ring. The failure. It's a failure in L by R. A structure could be determinate, indeterminate. In indeterminate, it could be simple indeterminacy, complex. And that we solve by strut and tie method, which has been uh, uh, offered by us by uh, the designer of the second Ugly Bridge. Doctor, I forgot, I'll tell you. Uh, the, this is the garden, Ganganagar, which I had, and we are having picnic and meeting and all that. So this is the trust, you all know. This is a complex, indeterminate trust. Now, bridge, I'll go through very fast. A bridge, what is the bridge? A simply supported an arch. This is the primary thing. Even 4,000 years back, arch technology was known to human beings. Continuous, cable suspended, cable state, sister Nivedita Shetu, extra dose is sister Nivedita Shetu. Cable suspended is uh, this San Francisco, cable state is our Vidyashagar Shetu, and newer technologies, combined technologies. Material. It will be so amazed. The, uh, our yes, bridge. please. Please. See the older, so older, how the bridge oh, is which type? That is, that is cable, uh, you know, it, 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 it simply supported. I will show you. I will show you this. You know, the two spans are simply supported. And in between, the middle span is simply supported. The two end spans are cantilevered. I will show you. So, this wood, it is very scarce material. But this is the best engineering material I have found much, much better than steel. Wood. Light creeper is an engineering material. I'll show you. Then cast iron, concrete, steel, priestess concrete, carbon fibers, and glass. Glass. China is using glass as pavement and walking steps for the bridges. This is a live bridge in Meghalaya about 200 kilometers from Shillong. These keepers are all alive. They are living. It is not only here. In many places in the world, living keepers are used as bridge. Then building technology, tall buildings, shear wall, again a new concept by F.Y. Khan. Then bunch of tubes, this Etihad and all, all this Dubai green buildings, New York technology. Now, um, that uh, Spanish architect has given rotating building. Material used in roofs, leaves, wood, burnt clay, glass, steel, concrete, stretched fiber. The Munich Olympic is stretched fiber. Accounts and accountancy. I was very poor in accounts. So I have found in my experience that some are good, but most of the engineers try to avoid accountancy and leave it to somebody else. But please don't do it. It will be short changed. There are sharks living in the outside world. If you don't know the accounts part, they will short change you. So, 
though you may or may not like the subject, but unfortunately, you have to study and get a somewhat mastery of this subject. Next, we'll say place of learning, where we learn, where we learn. On the right side, on the right side, you will find uh, uh, this green. This is a rare color. Flowers are always various colors. Leaves and other parts are green, but flower is hardly green. Now, places of learning. Where do you learn? In my idea of understanding, a site is the best place of learn. Then next base is workshop. An office gets the little less point from my side as far as the learning goes. You learn at site. There are always some problem we'll develop. Don't ever think that a site is very smooth and very free. Everybody has done great engineering, great assembly design, join check 10 times. There'll be no problem. There'll be problem. In 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 <clears throat> Tejpur, the two point eight kilometer bridge, bridge. five spans. Five spans. What, is what is happening? Five spans, five spans from one side one started side rotate rotate. I don't know what is. I don't know what is happening. There is so there is so. This is a, is a workshop, workshop. No, no. How do I stop this? Stop this? Mr. P.K. Sahu. Mr. P.K. Sahu. P.K. Sahu. Yes. P.K. Sahu. Yes. Mute yourself. Mute yourself. I can't mute yourself. I can't mute yourself. I can't mute yourself. Oh. Eco is coming from your side. Eco is coming from your side. Hello. Hello. Hello, Mr. Sahu. Yes. Sahu. Now it's okay. Now this is the North Workshop in, in Germany, Hamburg, here. This is Ganga Bridge at Patna. These are all, I have visited all these places. That is the way you learn. You see, you visit the workshop. You go to the site. This is the Mageba Workshop at Fushak. Uh, and, and, and this is the Mageba Workshop in Shanghai. Shanghai. This is Gyani with me. This is a Bulak workshop. Now, human and social interaction. Don't be afraid of interacting socially. Engineering is not engineering with machines and cements and concrete. There is a human factor in it. You will be standing here and there will be so many people who will be covering you. You will be standing here. There will be so many people who will be covering you. I have a friend, Jaduhar. Uh, Ara Joduhar. He is now the uh, head of the technical advisory group in the New Delhi technical. The New Delhi is expanding yourself by 500 kilometers. 250 kilometers, six lines are there, starting from some metro in New Delhi and to going to UP, going to Rajasthan, Gujarat, Kashmir, etc. Now, Mr. Jodhuar was uh, mechanical, uh, member mechanical uh, of the Indian Railways. He has written a book. And since we are great friends, he told me, if somebody approaches you, you try to solve their problem. It doesn't matter whether you are able to solve the problem or not solve the problem. But that you are trying is the most important thing. People must appreciate that you are not feigning, you are trying, try. People are working for you. They are your friends, they are giving you your food. So please try. 
they are satisfied if you try. Some people or some looker, looker means money, joins software companies. But after graduation, joining software company is good, you get money, fine. But the problem of obsolescence is there. If you are doing for 10 years some copy job, then what happens? A new boy, you are earning at that time X. A new boy comes, he asks for 0.2X or 0.3X, doing the same work. If you don't put your input, if you don't improve your knowledge base and go on putting new things. So that is the problem of uh, software. Either you love it or you go on getting yourself changed. New knowledge, new base. Everybody is changing. Every day, new technology is coming up. The idea of <clears throat> storage, the idea of database, it is expanding like infinity. The what you can do with the database. So everything you have to you have to get yourself updated every time. Otherwise, you'll be lost. Some fundamental maths, maths, maths is a very interesting subject. Maths is honestly a very interesting subject. So, so if you have to, few maths, you have to know from your heart and practice it. Even sleeping, that is Euler's number 2.718 pi 3.141. Golden ratio 1.618. Prime numbers. Imaginary numbers. This, this is something funny, really. Next. E, I'll not go into this rational, irrational, etc. Pi, the history, it's a fascinating history. People do millions of figures. Pi. Man. Now we come to golden ratio. A, any object, the ratio, a ratio, this by this, it looks good if the ratio was 1.618. 1 by psi is 1.618. Psi minus 1 is 0.618. It's a beautiful number. So it's called golden ratio, psi. Prime numbers. If prime numbers are invented, not invented, our key, our computer communication would not be permitted. Simple. Our key for coding computer communication so that people cannot listen to it, people cannot decipher it. The person to whom it is meant, he will have a, it's a these are all technologies you learn. So prime number is that way very important. But alas, now that quantum computer has come, I don't know what will happen to the keys. Maybe 100 figure long keys. Uh, anyway, I'll not go deep into it. It's a very, very deep subject, but absolutely interesting. Prime numbers, Marsene prime. Then Parmat's last theorem, Zeno's paradox, then Russell paradox. This series of Fibonacci numbers, it's a beautiful series. One Fibonacci, sort of a religious person in Italy, he created this, but then let us see. This is, you take one, then one, then two, then one and two. One plus two is three. Then two plus three, five. And this is the way how you create your Fibonacci numbers. But once you create a number like this, its beauty is 
beautiful. It gives you a calm like this. And nature follows Fibonacci numbers. All of nature follows this kind of card. I'll show you later. Then Benoit Mendelbrot used to work in IBM. Our professor Amitabh Ganguly, he was 1961 batch in metallurgy. He was this, uh, he used to work with him. So this is what fractal geometry is. It repeats itself. This is fractal, fractal geometry. It goes on repeating the Brahma. So fractal creates the leaves, the ocean shores, the boundaries of a river. These all follows fractal. You can explain it by fractal geometry. This is a computer generated fractal pattern. So what is a fractal? What is a fractal? Fractal is a mathematical term, my friend. You you look it up. This is this is the term. It has been given to that part of geometry. It's called a fractal geometry. Next. Now I come to certain human made. We are talking about natural figures. Now I come to human made numbers, preferred numbers. What is preferred number? Why I need preferred numbers? Now, this is Renard, a, a French army corporal by the name Renard. He created this preferred numbers. R5, R10, R20. I'll show you a few more slides on this. This is the first choice, second choice, third choice. Like this. Now, what does it mean? What does it mean? Say, a person is manufacturing electric motors. He wants to make motors between 10 kilowatt and 100 kilowatt. So you can make it like that, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 90, 100. He will have 10 motors in his stock. But how much is serving his clients? He has got 10 kilowatt, then he has got 20 kilowatt. Somebody comes with a need of a 15 kilowatt motor. He says, I don't have 15 kilowatt. I have got 10 kilowatt, 20 kilowatt. Then the customer says, look, I need 15 kilowatt. You are giving me 50% less if I accept 10 kilowatt. You are giving me 20 kilowatt. That will be 37.5 of some such figure more than I need. Then somebody comes, says I need a 95 kilowatt machine. You say I have got, sorry, I have got 90. I have got 100. So you are serving me within two by five percent of his requirement. Five percent of his need. So at one end of the spectrum, you are serving a customer within 50 percent of his choice. At another end of the spectrum, you are serving the customer within five percent of his choice. No good. So this, had he distributed this product like 10, 12.5, 16, 20, 25, 31.5, 40, 50, 63, 80, 100. He will, whatever kilowatt anybody needs, within the whole range, he will always start being within 6 or 7% of his demand. Or if he goes to some other choice, within 12% of his demand. It is the beauty of preferred numbers. I'll show you some figures. You will see all our Indian standards, rods, plates, joists, everything follows preferred numbers. The, as usual, the motor kilowatt it follows preferred numbers. You, you go to Siemens, you try to buy switch gear. There will be 
6.3 amps, 16 amps, 32 amps, like that. They choose. This is preferred number, 1.6. This is fifth root of 10. This is 10th root of 10 preferred numbers. R, this is R prime. R, R, then this is R prime. We do a little bit alteration. That is 3.15, we say 3.2. Small alteration. We accept R prime 10. R prime 20. This is the best series I use. I go on in all my designs. You are trying to do a design of a crane. A new factory. What will be the span of the factory? What will be the height of the shed? What will be the capacity of the crane? If the crane is 10 ton capacity in class 4, the same crane can be 12.5 ton in class 3. The same crane can be 16 ton in class 2. The same crane can be 20 ton in class 1 duty. That is the beauty of preferred numbers. In uh, this is my very favorite series. All my designs, whatever data I have selected, I use this R prime 20. Six, any range, I'll give 6.25% within the demand. Then this is, of course, 40th root of 10. This is 3.12% of the demand. Next, multitasking. Multitasking is same thing you do simultaneously two, three tasks. The ladies in our house, they are great multitasker like Madurga. This is my residence in Salt Lake. <clears throat> I have a pump, Excelsior, in front in the footpath. This is the practice in Salt Lake. So you find one leaf has just sheared in the middle, but both sides are living. Like in the plane, the cables, the fuel lines, there are multiple paths. One electronic circuit fails, the other circuit will be coming into play without knowing. That is multitasking. When you throw something in the space, the system must perform. The system must have multiple path, multiple parallel path available. If one path goes wrong, the other structure, other circuit will get in seamlessly. That is multiple parallel path. This, I love this plant. This is called Asplenium Nidas. I had a tissue culture lab. Of course, I donated it to Ramakrishna Mission, Narendrapur. But this, I produce this. They, they are not produced normally. They are produced by tissue culture. You find them in Singapore, in all trees, all plants. Next. Change in engineering with time. When you look at engineering, what is engineering? What it serves? What purpose it does? That changes with the epoch, with the time. Progress of human civilization, you see the progress of human civilization and then what is happening? At the Stone Age, engineering was for survival. We, 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 our stone tools, we, uh, we put sharp edges by sharpening, and then that is engineering. Next is dawn of civilization, engineering for social being, industrial revolution. In engineering for industrial progress, which is which is almost killing us, and this is Silicon Age. I don't know whether the Silicon Age will be able to 
solve the problem created by the engineering for industrial progress. Say this. This is a. You know, you have to. You are thinking of designing something. How will you do it? These are the shock transmission units used in uh, bridges and buildings and various other places uh, for seismic and other things. So you have to a need. There has to be need. Why do I? Why do I want to do a product? There has to be need. Second is the design and execution arises from a creative response to a need and then all design and execution results in a system system product or project that meets the need so i think of something i do a vision produce it and then the end result must satisfy my first thinking this is Engineering. We, we, Mageva has produced these machines for the world, and these are our design. I was involved. Information and documentation. It is very important. A information which is lost in a company, or a information which you cannot retrieve in a reasonable short period of time may be called a lost information and a lost information is no good i need it i what will be the diameter pitch of this gear that was used that in that design i need this now but i don't have any record and i don't know where to find so a information will have two parts one is the address, another is the content. A information to be retrieved must have an address, and then address will contain the content. So how do you devise the address? That is the beauty. So if you put the year and the month in the address, then at least you will know, yes, I was working in 1988 on this project. So I searched 1988, etc., etc., etc. Then you can put your information in the storage, but the in the cloud, the moment you put in the cloud, somebody can hack it. <laughs> that that has become a great passion and a hobby for the people. Some people earn money out of hacking information. Is that tulips in in you can know. Um, that is uh, that is in Holland. That they open for two months only, March, April, May. That's it. This is uh, in a Kuken hop. This is a, a river produced by flowers. So, uh, information and documentation. So, the quality assurance program is a part. And performance assurance program is a part. You before you, you see, I was involved in the design and tendering of the Kashmir Bridge, Anji Khan. So we asked the people, you have to give us the schedule, the quality assurance program, how you have to do your bridge. And you will not do that one. You will be giving a five year guarantee, 10 year. How do I ensure that it runs for 100? Or seeing the quality that I am paying for. So, all projects have to have a quality assurance program, QAP. That is very interesting in our field of engineering. Then comes tolerances. You buy a car from Germany, you want to have a bolt replaced unless you follow certain tolerances. All over the world, the bolt produced in India will not fit the German machine. I will not discuss much about tolerances. This, your, your college must be teaching you. This is must to achieve any kind of assembly 
in the field of engineering, tolerances. It can, there could be books on it, there are standards on it. We have got 219, IS 219 on tolerances, part one, part two, part three. Then in engineering, the idea is one generation, one company, one branch. Yes, please. Yes. Yes, please. Yes. One company, one branch must convey the information to another branch or keep it for posterity. So how do you do it? You produce drawings. Even if you do design, you have to, you have to satisfy your design requirements by drawings. So Drawings must be standard then. What is the standard? Drawing sheets are first standard. Drawing methodology is standard. So we have got IS SP26, which gives you everything on sheets, method, view, etc. etc. So we have got a beautiful way of designating the sheet sizes. A0, A1, A2. This is one meter square. Half a meter square, quarter meter square, and so on and so forth. How do you come about? They must be foldable. They must be foldable. This A1, two A1 must produce one A0. That's why the ratio of these seats must be one is to one point, one is to one by root two. So you solve it one X into X by root two. And you, one meter square, you get these values. So these are the answers. This is the world standard. You produce the drawing, it has to be uh, either any of these drawings, A1, A0, A2, etc. Otherwise, nobody will accept it in the world. Now comes a very interesting item. My, my copy of the old book is there. I have taken a photograph of it and put it there. It is called UDC, Universal Decimal Classification. Universal Decimal Classification. How? How do you... How do, how do you store information? And how do you retrieve it? So, I said earlier, that you have to produce an address and a, a number for this information. It, in, information is an abstract thing. It is a written document, a written drawing, or whatever. But you can provide a number to it. That's why it is called universal decimal classification. All the knowledge under the sun has been divided and given numbers. Like our mechanical engineering is 621. Our civil engineering is 624. Electrical engineering is 621.3. Like that. And then you go on putting additional numbers so that you need an article on the astigmatism of your left eye. So you create a UDC number. And Give the librarian that if there is any article on this uh, number and she, she finds something, she gives it to you. All the major, all the major request, Mr. Pankaj Mitra, to mute himself. We can't mute him. Pankaj Mitra, please. The first children. I'm sorry. The second children or third children. The second or third. Please mute. Please mute. Dr. Sudip Kumar, go. Sudip. Yes, please. So, what I was discussing, really? Yeah, UDC, universal. So, all the subject under the sun can be noted by certain numbers and decimal additions, etc., etc. It's a beautiful creation of human science and our whole library work, our books and everything 
is noted by that UDC number. Even large in better journals, in the right you will find a UDC number designating the number of that article. Now we'll come to the frontiers of engineering. Well, then, mechanical, electrical. Now. You see, Dean L. Kamen, he has produced this hey, hey, hey. segue. It's a hey, new hey. new technology, new development. Okay, hey, hey. Elon Musk. People hey, are hey. talking about him these days. He has come very much in the news. He has created a lot of new technology. The battery car. Then quantum computer, that's the newest technology. We have got till date about 53 qubit computer and IBM and others they have put it in public demand that for one hour or two hours you can use it in this time. But you have to register for it. So today a quantum computer is a viable thing. It is being done and people are trying it. People as yet does not know how to program it, how to tame it, but the quantum computer with 53 qubit is there. 53 qubit means you can solve any uh, code. 100 digit uh, code you can you can you can solve in maybe three four minutes. So these are Amazon, Google, and IBM. All are producing their own quantum code. But uh, in the field in this, there are, it is so difficult to judge the truth from the untruth. Yes. Then people are thinking of creating mind. Yes, this Mr. Ray Kujuel is the author of Singularities near. See, he is thinking of creating a mind, creating a computer with its own mind. And this is Marvin Minsky of Artificial Intelligence. How to create a mind by Ray Kujuel. He has got a method. He says, when a child is born, his brain is empty. There is nothing in it. So you go on giving it impetus of knowledge every day, day in, day out, and his synapses in the neocortex are tuned and knowledge gets in. So Mr. Kujwell says, I can create a computer like this and give him a human mind, but mind, mind of his own. This is new again, the solar impulse too, they have covered the whole world with their solar impulse too. This is operating with sun, solar power only, no other machine. This is Mr. Boschbar and Picard. They have already gone all over the world once. Solar impulse too started from Dubai on 2015 March 09, landing Hello. in India and they have traveled for 42,000 kilometer and return to Dubai on such and such. So they have they have covered the whole world on solar power only. They have crossed the Pacific Ocean on solar power. They, 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 they took some time so that they will have the sun on them always. Then we are creating human ear we are creating human kidney by 3D printing. Now comes the most important thing. Whatever engineering you are doing, you must look after the ecology, sustainability, and the disasters that will come out of it. The sustainability and the ecology. The ecology must be balanced. Otherwise, our engineering was, has got no value. If we do not, if we go extinct, then what is the meaning of all this engineering? So, 
you have got only one world. You don't have a second or a third one. Please use it with care. Need a hammer for him. Hello. What's wrong? I am requesting Mr. Kompas to unmute yourself. We can't mute from our side. There is something happening is there. I can speak many, but we can't mute Akhil Varma and Pankaj Mitra, Mr. I am requesting both of them to kindly mute themselves. Okay. Now, helping the planet. Leave the planet resources better than one we have received. That is the most important thing. Leave the planet resources better than what you have received. If every one of us in all our actions do it, okay, we have taken this much of quantity of natural resources. We we make it, make do with it a better proposition that we in our work we improve it, we put 10% more. There are there are various ways of doing it. You take out coal, then you can create to coal, not that. There are various ways of doing it. This is not sustainable. Not sustainable. This is also this mono, mono farming, industrial farming. This is dangerous for sustainability. The maize in Kansas City, extremely large carbon food, larger than the automobiles and coal based power plants. This is very dangerous. The mono based, monoculture okay. one. Only wheat, only rice, or only maize. That is not good. It is not good for the soil. It is not good for the earth. You see, these are feedlot. And from this, the water body, such a dangerous thing has happened to this water body. Uh. Five steps for feeding okay. 9 million people. Fridge agricultural footprint. Ensure on existing farms. Use resources more efficiently. Ship diet. Change it. Our, our uh, non-waste diet is not really good. Not very good. The amount of water we use in one kg of chicken. Maybe three liter, four liter. For one kg of goat, maybe 50 liters. One kg of cow meat, it had taken 600 liters. So, yes, if you want to take, you take fish, you take chicken, but the higher, uh, like goat meat, cow meat, they are not good for the earth. Reduce waste. Four times. Whatever we consume, we waste four times the present habit of the world. Now they are in Saskatchewan, in Canada, they are trying to capture carbon dioxide. That's new technology. Minamata disease, this mercury poisoning in Japan, what has happened? So all our actions, they create Bhopal disaster, Bhopal disaster, these have created such things. So we as engineer must not create such things. We must think twice, thrice, four times. When we are having, you cannot avoid risky operations always, but the safety in such operations must be doubly checked, triply checked, such, such that this Bhopal disaster does not happen. Nuclear power generation in Fukushima, Chernobyl, three mine islands. <clears throat> it is not that in a nuclear power plant, there are 443 nuclear power plants operating in the world today. It is not that when, how, and at all accidents will happen. No. It is when it will happen. 
these 443 man-made items, you are sure that something is going to go wrong in this. So, it is not that you are not safety, following the safety codes. It's not that you are not conscious, but still, this man-made equipment, some accidents may happen. So, it is such, you know, in, in this Fukushima, there are millions of tons of radioactive water. And that, they have got no way they are going to release in this ocean. Now, there are five plants. Now, it's called elephant foot, the reactor, the reactor proper. For one plant, the elephant foot is lost. It has gone to the sea. And it is being radioactivity there, strontium, calcium, 100 years of half-life. So this is the dangerous thing. We must search for alternative energy, sun, solar power. And in the world, there is enough of alternative energy. Only thing we have to appropriately furnish them without going to this dangerous options are still dangerous now they are planning of doing a portable nuclear power it is still dangerous dangerous in my view ethics now what is the ethics ethics is a way of understanding and examining what is right and what is wrong you yourself is the judge and please believe me you are always a good judge. Yourself will tell whether this is right or this is wrong. Entrepreneurship. If you make a better mousetrap, the world will be a path to your door. This is by Ralph Waldo Emerson. That means what will produce? Entrepreneurship. What do you produce? Entrepreneurship means you produce something for the consumption of the people at large. But you must produce something which is new. You produce, you produce something. Unless the disc before the discovery of the radio, nobody knew. What is the radio? Before the discovery of a television, nobody knew. What is the television? So it is a quantum jump. You think of some. There are two ways. There is a product. There are chocolates. You improve the technology. You improve the waste in production. That is one method. Gradual, step by step. And there are quantum jumps. Like the uh, pocket uh, transistors produced in Japan. It's a quantum jump. You have got a market. Learning from nature. This is my very favorite subject. I always learn from nature. This is, uh, some of these slides are from my friend, Dr. Ovijit Dashgupto, director of the He has retired recently. You see these two. These, unless they are there, human or all biological life will die on the face of the earth very shortly. The bees are necessary for our producing our food. This is from my rooftop. This is my rooftop. rooftop. So Gaia. Gaia means the term is used very often. You will come across this term very often. So Gaia is the earth the inner art, the outer shell, the atmosphere, all this taken together, including the living beings, everything is Gaia. So Gaia needs balance of all living things for its continuation. The smallest bee, the ants, they are all necessary for our survival. 
this is Fibonacci number in nature. Then again, this Fibonacci number, it comes. This is the sunflower. Fractals in nature. Fractals in, this is a common succulent. Fractals in nature. <clears throat> this is my residence in Salt Lake. This is the opposite footpath. This plant was planted by me, by the other side. You will find beauty in nature when one plant has gone up, it has branched. The moment there will be a second plant to balance, otherwise the tree will fall. So nature creates its own balance. You have to learn from it. Learning from nature. This is a palm tree. This is our flexible lighting post. Again, learning from nature. This is the same plant I, I told you I have planted. During some period of the year, it looks like this. During some period of the year, it looks like this. During other period, it looks like this. So tree changes. Tree changes with every session. Change with time. Tree changes without changing the root change without changing values and ethics. This we learn from nature. The stability of the structure, the great many entry. Eggshell. This is thin cell structure in London. This is lotus flower. Whoever has seen this lotus temple in the Lily, this is a copy of a lotus flower. Beautiful. The French architect has done it. This is the burrows made by animal, and this is our tunnel. The same philosophy. Flying of a bird, flying of an aeroplane, flying of a dragonfly, flying of a helicopter. You will see something very interesting. The dynamics of story. This albatross for 10 days, it can go on moving, flying, taking its food from the sea without landing ever for 10 days. How could it be done? Where is the energy balance? Where is the energy balance? Well, that is the beauty of this flying of the albatross that it gains energy while driving down. It is hardly any loss in the energy which it makes up by the food, additional food. Water distribution. You think of a large city like Calcutta, the, the banyan tree leaf will give a symbol. You see a Long city like Mumbai, a mango leaf will give you the symbol how the water distribution is done. Look at this. Fight for survival. Fight for survival. Look at this. These are black tulip in Netherlands. This is a beauty. Survival. Now, Mathematics. In, in United Nations, uh, behind the main building, there is a garden. And all the countries of the world are presented there. Trees from various continents. There is also Jardo uh, the Math, a mathematical garden also. The garden of mathematics. Trees follow the mathematical law. This is fascinating. Mathematical laws. They have been explained also how, how they are following the laws of mathematics. Now, I'll come almost at the end of my lecture. Our engineering heritage. Leonardo da Vinci, the god, god of engineering. 500 years back, he has, he has created a model from sketches, this model was made. Now, a bridge has been made in Europe and it follows the same. The stress pattern and everything is beautiful. 
Ese es Leonardo da Vinci. El Duomo de Firenze, Basílica de Santa Maria del Fiore. This is Philip Brunoschelli. It is created. This is double wall. This is double wall. And 44 meters at the base. It's created at that time. Beautiful. This is temples of Kanyakumari. This is temples of Milaksh, Milakshi. Our, our heritage, our country's heritage. This is the temple of Belur Halibin. I have ever, never, ever seen the beautiful sculptures anywhere in India that is in Belur Halibin. They are so beautifully protected. I'll show you one sample. You see, these are the sculptures in Belur Halibin. Beautiful protection. And it is standing for so many years. This is, of course, our Taj Mahal. Everybody knows it. These are our pyramids. This is the heritage of the world. Machu Picchu, Stonehenge, Harappa, Nalanda, Taj Mahal, Blue Mosque, Espahan, Iran. Now, Burj Khalifa has been added in Dubai. This is our cultural heritage. Rabindranath, Shakespeare. So, this was my past, the garden, which I have lost. Some political leaders have taken it away. Anyway, but this was created as a sustainability, experiment in sustainability. And I am left with this only. This is the rooftop garden in my present residence. Thank you very much for kindly giving me such a long time to talk to you and my pleasure. Thank you. So I have ended. Thank you very much for kindly listening. Mr. Bhomik, Professor Bhomik, please. Thank you, Professor Ghosh, for your excellent presentations on how to be a engineer. And uh, I can say that uh, more especially, it deals with how to be a mechanical engineer. And um, uh, you have passed out from this institute in 1961. And, uh, at that time, maybe most of us was not born at that time. At least myself, I can say. Uh, so uh, you have more than 60 years of engineering experience with you. So 1961 to 2022, a vast experience. And still you are active in this engineering field. And you have a lot of things to share with us. Rather, I can say that if we should learn more and more things from you. And uh, you have given your thoughts from the natures. So you have you have shown that uh, being an engineer, uh, what sh we should observe from the nature. What is the utility of going through the library? What are the utility of reading the books? What to know? What more we like? We have to know being an engineer. So I think uh, uh, those who are present over here, they have a lot of. Uh, at least uh, questions or uh, maybe they wants to discuss more with you so i opened the sessions for discussions uh, with uh, professor achyut ghosh and the participants hello professor bhumi yes sir ah uh, so i was just it is not a question but uh, a fascinating lecture by achyutda but what I think his main contention I could see is the development of the mind to become an engineer, which is very important. Now there, I think when Achuddha graduated or even I graduated, something was there in our college, which was extremely important for 
making engineers of the future, which I find totally missing. And in those days during the reunion time, which was almost fixed 23rd January, 24th January, 25th and 26th, there used to be also a technical exhibition. I remember when I was in first year, Achyuddha was in second year, even in subsequent years, so many advanced things I could see, I remember now, even uh, making a, a square hole cutting in steel, I could see there was an actual machine made by some student, senior one, which I know that uh, these kinds of things were very difficult. So there are like Achyuddha made one automated uh, car, car garage, uh, where I think, I think 50 or 60 small cars could be automatically in a part in a multi-storied car garage. That also I remember I saw in 1958, 59. So that culture, the college has lost. And I find that uh, most of the other institutions, they never had it, but we had it, but we have not preserved that. So I think having a, a technical exhibition like that, where things will be conceived, innovated, and made by the students was an extremely important uh, part of our education. I remember that. And Ochuda was one of the, uh, what I will say, leading person in having that technical exhibition. I don't know when and where it got vanished, you know, at what time and for what reason. Yes, sir. Can, can I, I, can I, I can comment on that because I think it is very relevant to his talk because he wants us to hear from him how to become an engineer. But I think that what he did as a student, uh, as a le leading student, I know he was very active. So that I think we have lost and why can't we again revive that? Professor Bhumi, can I respond? Yes, sir. Is he? It is my honor, Amitabho, Professor Amitabho Ghosh is junior to me by one year. But it's the seniority of juniority doesn't mean anything. I, I to have a respect on a man, I must love him and I must respect him. So Amitabho is junior to me, but I respect him. We are great friends, but I respect him. So a comment from me, I must respond properly. Please listen, sir. When we are in engineering college, our <clears throat> Professor Shen, Dr. Shankar Shen, I had the habit of making models. So, you know, study engineering is not from books only. You have to, I, I told you, engineering we learn from sight. So I told Professor Shankar Shen, sir, the official workshop gets closed at four. How do I produce a model? We should work in the workshop. He said, all night. I'll give you a workshop. So in the back room of the college, there is the one single story building. He arranged a lock and key for that, gave it to us. He arranged some lead shaping machine, grinding machine in that shop and power in that shop, 115 volts. We could work there up to 10 in the night. That key was with us. So we never considered that studying and getting first in the class uh, is the engineering. No, you must produce something. You must have the power to think. You must think. And how do you develop the, uh, the faculty of thinking? So Professor Dr. Shane is dead today. He is dead today, but I am indebted to him like anything. He was our great teacher. He solved, he opened the door, he solved our problem like this. Now, if today's, in today's field, it is the class result that matters for your service, for your salary, for your lifestyle, etc. But we didn't bother in our time when we are doing engineering, we said we, we are not bothered. We know we will be, there will be 10 jobs for us waiting when he graduated. Whatever way we graduate, the first boy or the last boy, doesn't matter. We are hardly three, four graduates who got first class. I mean, that was the style there. It is not, 
It is not good or bad. That was his time. And every one of us got two, three, four jobs like that. That was the industrial climate. That was the situation. And those were the teachers. Those were the students. I, I don't know how to create that atmosphere of experimentation and satisfying your own ego. Thank you. And because uh, yeah, but sir, uh, because of the use of uh, so much of computers, or we depend so much of computer depends on computers. So that's why most of the cases the students are working on development of the model which exists only inside the computer. And whenever we ask the students to make the model physical model, then uh, it, it, they faces a lot of problems regarding how to do it and where from the fund will come. Like all these issues are coming up. And maybe from our side, we are not giving that much of importance to the students to make the hardware setup. So uh, that's why we find that uh, the students are not coming up with the model, with the innovative models. So this may be one of the issues, like uh, so much we depend for our teaching, learning process on the computer systems. And every time the students are using the computer for making the simulation model, and but uh, when they find that it is working, the simulation model is working and then they stop immediately, they stop working on it. So we have to make a culture, this culture, uh, basically at your time, sir, this culture was there, but uh, somehow in the middle, uh, this culture has been lost and we understand the importance of it. And definitely we should take the necessary steps from the departmental level, from the institute level, so that we can encourage the students uh, for uh, innovative kind of work. But this is a fact, like we have uh, institutions innovation council we have, and we are facing the problems with the students that the students are not at all participating in the innovation kind of work. Okay. And uh, I don't know that why, why, but uh, the participants of the students for this kind of innovative kind of work in the thinking process, learning process is practically speaking, it is absent right now. But sir, in that case, uh, yes, Ashok, one minute, please. In that case, sir, we are not producing good engineers. Somewhere we are failing in your duty. I remember Professor Shen, of what a beautiful teacher was. He, he, he opened the door of infinity to us. You know, he is not teaching us this is the electrical motor. This is an electrical generator. That is something accepted. He opened the door to infinity in front of us. That opening the door, opening your mind, that is necessary. Yes, Ashok, please. <clears throat> Achuda had, had a fantastic lecture, but I could read the slides very clearly. But the voice was always echoing. There is so much of echo. I don't know whether the problem was at my end or at your end, or some people are keeping their microphone on. The broadcast yes, was very noisy. But the yes, slides were very clear, and obviously, I am in trouble. Because I have no, to give I the think, I think so the maybe the organizer, problem organizer should keep the best speaker at the end of the program, not at the beginning. They start with Professor Ghosh and then Ochudda and then ask me to give the lecture. <laughs> but Lata Mangas at the end of the program. Ashok, I tell you, I have attended some of your lectures. I just love it. There is no comparison to it. You don't compare me with you. You are much, much above, right? I am sorry about the sound. I must say my my voice is a little bit cracked. Your, your microsystem, uh, microphone is OK. I think some problem is with the Professor Mullik's uh, audio system. Because when you are speaking, everything is fine. But when uh, Professor Mullik was telling, so the voice was equal. So maybe the problem with uh, Professor Mullik's system, I think, most probably. The next lecture. This has to be fixed before the next lecture. Organize this. We'll try to we'll we'll the issue. Yes, Sumona. 
May I request you, mother? What is your uh, opinion about this talk? Did it go about your head, or you appreciate somewhat? Your voice is not clear. Your voice is not clear. Yeah. Yes, Shona. Hello, sir. Can you hear? Yeah, yeah. Now it is okay. Yes, sir. The lecture was really insightful. I love the way that you. In related everything with the nature and your rooftop garden was also very nice. Shumana, I tell you, you don't have to praise me. Please, criticize me. If you want to improve me, criticize me. Don't praise me. Well, so there is nothing all... to criticize, actually. Ah, na, na, ma. There is always something wrong somewhere. Something... You criticize, try to criticize so that I improve. So is there any uh, any further questions from the audience? Sir, may I add something, sir? Oh. Go ahead. Oh. Sir, I'm Ramanuj Bhattacharya, 2006 Mechanical. OK, OK, OK. Uh, sir, yes. uh, I have a question right uh, regarding the slide on the uh, industrial disaster that you are talking about. You mentioned about Fukushima Daiichi disaster. Sir, uh, to the best of my knowledge in 2011, this uh, incident triggered because of the tsunami that took place in the Japanese peninsular area. So in case of these unforeseen circumstances that may take place in future as well, how an engineer can prepare himself for uh, when, to address those things which are unforeseen. That's what the thing is. Can I, answer? Can I answer, Professor Moderator? Yes, yes. 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 Uh, uh, Ramanujo, Ramanuj, thank you very much for putting Sir. this question. First thing is, it is totally wrong for the location. Why do you locate? Uh, 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 you know, everybody knows there will be tsunamis. Everybody knows there are uh, high level water, there are earthquakes in Japan. So how do you, as an engineer, as a planner, how do you put a, a atomic power plant on the site where water can jump and flood everything? Even it is, a, it is wrong to put any atomic power plant in Japan, such a seismic zone. It is not that it will not fail. It is a question of when it is going to fail, when the accident is going to happen. So that is a predictable phenomena. And ignoring that prediction is a mistake in engineering planning. And if you have to do it, make a wall. Like, you know, there is a failure in Russia. So they have covered it twice with a concrete dome. Once dome and a second containment dome. So if you have to produce cost, what is cost? 10 lakhs of people die and another 10 lakhs will be dying slowly for another 100 years. So how do you pay for it? So the cost is a meaningless phenomenon. If you have to have Something like this. Plan your walls. Plan your site. Who made it? Who asked you to do it on the shore? If you have to do it, do it somewhere inside. I, I have partly answered your question. You can appreciate your own answer if you think deeply. Okay, sir. It's the preparedness for the disaster that might come. Okay, so I understand that what you are saying is basically the choice of choice or selection of site was wrong in view of the fact that Japan always experiences high seismic activities. You should not have been planned in those locations. That's what you're 
uh, I mean, we should have cho chosen some other point. That's what he was saying there. That is one of these solutions. There are there are other views also. This is this will take too long to go into it. You know, there are plenty of literature on this Fukushima. At least hundred articles, and of learned people. And you may like if you are interested, kindly go through it. These are all available today in internet. Please, there will be you will find various other views. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, sir. So, any other, any other points to be discussed? I might make a comment. Shudhi here, sir. Okay. From yes. the presentation, Professor Chudros, what I felt that probably he is also trying to suggest that people or rather engineers should also pursue their hobbies, individual hobbies, apart from the profession. We have noted his slides on library, on rooftop gardens. So probably he is also, that's what he is trying to mean. I think he can clarify that. So without hobbies, I think, I mean, engineers are also not complete. Only looking into, uh, you know, design books and pursuing the profession is not really going to help engineers. Can I respond, Professor Bhomik? Yes, sir. Yes. Professor Ghosh. Yes, sir. My answer is like this. We use 5% of your brain. Hmm. I mean, that is what I have learned from reading books. You kindly appreciate. We use 5% of our brain. So, why not extend it? And somewhere in the literature, I have read a man who doesn't have a hobby is all equivalent to a murderer. So I don't remember today so by nice. which author it is there. But in the corner of my mind, I thought I have read somewhere like this. So you, a man personally doesn't know how much he can handle, how much his brain can handle without getting switch off. So oh, you go on experimenting. You go on trying this and that, and we have got hardly 24 hours in a day. At the age of 81, I am considering that I have hardly got 24 hours a day, out of which I sleep for nine hours and other physical activities, walking on the roof, three hours, so 12 hours. So I study and work engineering and all this for 12 hours only. But I consider 12 hours is very limited. I should be given more time. It is like that. You said you do not know how much your brain can handle. You just try this. You try that. You will know the brain has uh, filled up, it's expanded itself to, to absorb that area of knowledge. There is no end to it. One more small query. If the chairman permits still. Yes, please. Uh, at the at the at this part of uh, the your professional career do you consider yourself as a mechanical engineer yet or you consider more of a structural engineer now <laughs> because your career was that's a very peculiar question you see i i am a mechanical engineer basically by faith but i don't believe these walls I don't believe these walls. You are an engineer. What do you practice to be? Okay. So, as it happens today, I am a member, I am fellow of a structural engineering society of India, FI Structi. But they have conferred it to me. What can I do? They have conferred it to me. So, you know, all this, why all this mechanical, civil, electronics, PWD engineering and all these kind of things is human creation. My brain has not created it. The human society has created it for their own advantage, for categorization, for class, put, put people in class, like letterbox in the post office. We put letterbox first, this for Nagpur, this for Mumbai, this for Delhi, like that. You categorize since you think that your time is limited, 
three years, four years, you have to do whatever you have to do within this period of time. But for the man himself, his time is unlimited. He can do whatever he likes. So to him, a mechanical, structural, uh, electronics and electrical, all this is almost uh, meaningless. Whatever he practices, he is expert on that subject. And we learn in the college to turn the page of the book and the basic laws. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. So I don't know that whether any other question is there in the minds. So if there is no questions, then I will just make a request to Professor Achyut Ghosh. Uh, in one sentence, uh, can you give an advice to the students who are preparing themselves to be an engineer? In one sentence, sir. as an advice to the students, to the students who are preparing themselves to be an engineer. Keep your mind open and observe. Okay. So that is a good advice. I hope that uh, the students, those who are participating. I have to thank, sir. I <laughs> kindly give me one minute for thanking. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can I do that now? Yes, sir. We are we are concluding sir, our session, sir. Yes. Sir, I love my alma mater. Throughout my life. I went on going to the college as some of old colleagues, old uh, professors in mechanical engineering will know. And I went on taking classes here and there. So I, I entering the college campus was a love affair for me. And entering the department, those memories. So I'm always eager, but there are circumstances beyond my control which uh, for last two, three years, other than this pandemic, this pandemic is something. But um, in the, our college, uh, some, uh, some, some thought process or something or something has created, I don't know, it has created some mechanism in my mind where I don't feel that uh, pleasure in attending the college. Oh, whatever happens, let me go this Tuesday and uh, talk to my, have a cup of tea with my Professor Shantanu and all this. But somehow, for the last two years, uh, 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 yes, Professor Kormoka, I used to go very often to Professor Kormoka and have a cup I of tea. I have expected it of all his gardens, rooftops, etc. Everything I have expected, a lot of <laughs> discussion and he has a uh, really loves Kormoka no, like anything, uh, I know. Not that yeah, I yeah. don't love Professor Kormokar. My love for yeah. Professor Kormokar is there. But somehow, something has happened in the college, some chemistry that uh, I, I don't feel like attending. I don't know when I'll regain it. I but hope online, I'll regain I, I'm it. Just, uh, just a minute. To one, online um, uh, advice for the students. Uh, Bhumi, Professor Bhumi, can yes. I online can say? Because he has told, uh, just mind, open your mind and observe. Yeah, or any innovatives. And last uh, few minutes, what he has presented with the nature, uh, mimicking, uh, mimicking and natures, he has compared with the slides. I think that is also prompted by young students also. But everything uh, you can observe from the nature, then you can see that what is happening and what is the new creation is there. Uh, so, Professor Goes also in his lecture also shown somewhere. That all the biomimicking and the, from the nature, what we can go extent of that kind of innovative work. Another thing, Professor Ghosh also tell because he's trained also. Professor Bhomik also remembered for the innovative minds to be inculcate the innovative minds. Professor Al Alpona Banerjee Memorial Trust, one crore of rupees alma mater has been given. I don't know that why that's why a second floor and third floor of the students center must be created. You know very well. I think you are also in the committee. I think. I am the chairman, but I cannot do anything. But one crore of rupees has been given. 
to inculcate for some of was told that that time is there actually that with that memory also uh, you know alpona energy uh, you know this memorial mm. center is there but one crore rupees i don't know how many how this fund is now utilizing i don't know professor amit is here i think he has told but that can be again it can be accelerated by the students to work in that after this uh, pandemic situation has gone that is students has been made up. yes the students so, has to come up uh, that kind of uh, modeling uh, shows etc so that it can be produced and separate workshop also nowadays uh, that's why you think there will be no walls for mechanical electronics electrical it is clearly understood so everybody in the multidisciplinary areas students together can work they can produce nowadays electrical vehicles etc challenging jobs is coming so they may work together that may innovative so that suggestion for sir goes always that period 1956 uh, or 58 to in that period what he has seen for our course of chit goes and for some other goes that can be again revived though has been culture has been changed with the computers etc but already that's why the alumni also uh, come across and is good amount has been given for this kind of things and so, is with the institute so we can again think about rethink about that how to buy with this okay now can you just professor bhumik i have got only one thing to say i must thank uh, the organizers for kindly permitting me to return my younger age and i am feeling very happy after all these talks honestly there is a feeling of happiness in me that i am in my college that's kind of thing thank you very much for kindly for meeting me definitely sir you are the means you people at the backbone of this institute and basically uh, we depends on your feedback and maybe sometimes we are doing some mistake okay and maybe we are not in the right path so whatever the suggestions you have provided us for the improvement for Uh, from our end and from the institute end uh, definitely it should be taken care and uh, this institute is open to all the alumni of this institute so at any moment at any time you are welcome to visit the institute and you are welcome to visit the mechanical engineering department thank you thank you sir thank you sir bye, bye. See. So over to the yeah. so over to the organizers uh, on behalf of the department and also on behalf of the centenary celebration committee. I would request the chairman, Professor Homi, to hand over a certificate of appreciation as well as a token memento to our honored guest today. Okay, and it's virtual, so we have the certificate ready. We also have uh, so show the certificate of memento. Please. So I hope our volunteers will present it on screen. So I request the chairman to. virtually handed over to yeah. our speaker please show the memento and the certificates on the screen uh, uh, professor ghost presentation is taken away can can you show the um, slide uh, the slide showing the certificate as well as the memento Sumura, can you hear us? Yes, yes, but we are we are unable to see the certificate at the moment. Sir, so is my screen not visible? Yes, yes, screen is okay. visible. Okay, sir. It has gone again. Okay, sir, I'm sharing it again. So is it visible? It's coming. It's coming. Still. So now is it visible? Not no. yet. I think your connection is also slow. Okay. Okay. The soft copy of the certificate I will attach in the uh, email. The memento will be keeping in the department, sir. I think 
at some time we will be visiting the department also and we will be meeting uh, so that i can hand it over to you thank you sir if it is possible to to arrange somebody to hand it over to professor pachud goes at his residence so that that will be doing that will be doing um, but yeah. he uh, probably will love to come to the department also i think okay I can always because come. of this pandemic Problem. situations, it may not be possible for me. Okay. Yeah, we'll we'll arrange yes. we'll arrange this thing. Yeah. That that if you arrange it, that will be so better. That, yeah. I'm proud. Your, your connection is slow, Sumona. I think okay. Okay. So, anyway. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. So uh, I'm proud of my alma mater. So thank you, sir, for uh, delivering this wonderful uh, lecture and sharing your thoughts, ideas, and hopefully the students have learned a lot about this mechanical engineering. And at least uh, we came to know also means in a new form, in a new way that being an engineer, we should look into the environment. So a lot of things are there so which we should learn from the nature. So at least this is the take out, take away from uh, this particular lecture from me. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Bhavi. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Sudeep. Thank you, Professor Bhavi. So thanks Bobby. to all the uh, participants okay, uh, to be present in this uh, lecture session. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Right. Bye. Bye. Thank you, sir. Bye. Thank you.